Okay, so before we go on to the therapeutic modalities of getting those renals started again, uh, I just have to let you know and remember that your pre-renal, pre-renal, another way to remember that is you have big buns, okay? Your BUN is big. So pre-renal, your pre, your buns are big, okay? Inside the renals, intra-renals, you have little buns, okay? <laughs> your BUN is smaller, or your BUN is closer to your creat. So pre-renal, you have 20 to 1 BUN-creat ratio. Um, and then your little buns, you have 10 to 1 um, BUN to creat ratio. That renal during your class is in March due to increase in this preceptor schedule. <laughs> No worries, guys. Um, if you guys can't make it to any of the um, live sessions, we always record 100% all these videos. So come back and um, get it on this site. Everything's recorded for you guys, so don't worry. You'll be okay. Now, something to know before we talk about um, the interventions as a nurse to initiate getting our kidneys, our washing machine started again, is that, well, let me ask you this first question here. What do you think is more serious, pre-renal or intra-renal? What's more serious in terms of your condition? Remember I've been saying, pre-renal, the fire is outside the house. The fire or the the fire, let's say, is not inside the kidneys just yet. Not inside those nephrons just yet. Um, intra-renal, the fire is inside. So, pre-renal, we're still going to be creating urine. We're still going to be having an output. Sure, we might have a high specific gravity, very concentrated, very stinky, very, very brown, but we're still going to have some urine output. Intrarenal, inside the renal, we're not going to have any more pee, pee No more pee, pee Because your kidneys are, the fire's inside the renals. That's the way you guys can remember it. So, let's talk about how to intervene as a nurse with something called HDTV. And it doesn't mean high definition television, okay? <laughs> So let's do it here. So let's see here. Let's see here. Okay. There it is. So how do we compensate? How do we intervene as nurses, as nursing students or nursing process? How does nurses intervene with this acute renal failure? We initiate something called HDTV here. All right. So as your kidneys are getting rid of a lot of fluid, let's say you're in the diuretic phase. Actually, you know what? We're in the oliguric phase. Oliguric just means that we're not creating PP at all. Or if we are creating PP, <laughs> we're not getting rid of a lot of it. So we're gonna have an increase in our potassium. Now, if you guys know about your sodium or your fluid and electrolytes, potassium is the king of electrolytes. It stands for basically contraction. So if you have too much potassium in the body, you might have dysrhythmias in your heart and a lot of things can happen. Um, one thing that we give inmates on death row to kill them for lethal injection is something called IV potassium. All that does is squeeze the heart, and the heart stops working. It's just a full contraction of the heart. 
So they go into cardiac arrest. Kind of morbid, I know, but... Okay, so your H, your hyperkalemia. What we give to correct that hyperkalemia, we want to make sure we're addressing first whatever is going to kill your patient the fastest. That's really how we make care plans. Whatever is going to kill your patient the fastest, that's what you focus on. So, we're going to give for hyperkalemia, what do you think we might give to bring down that potassium level? That's correct. We are going to give um, we're going to give um, k -exalate. Hey, Chris, see you next week, buddy. Don't worry, all these things are recorded for you. So, so we're going to give k -exalate to get that K to exit the body. So we give k -exalate. And that K is going to exit the body so we can't go through the pee, pee anymore. We have to go through the other opening in the body, which is our uh, poop chute, right? <laughs> so k is going to help our patient get out that excess potassium that's not being excreted from the kidneys, getting it out in our uh, feces. So just know when you give your patient this k they're going to have a lot of diarrhea. So save that k till shift change. Let the other nurse deal with... No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> okay? So, the next thing here. We give dopamine. That's our D. We give our dopamine. D-O-P-mean. Dopamine, you know what I mean? <laughs> So dopamine, dopamine helps, you go on break, okay. So dopamine helps to dilate those renal arteries, get more blood down to those renals. Remember, more perfusion, more pressure, more perfusion, we're getting more oxygen to those renals. So dopamine will actually help dilate those renal arteries. Everywhere else in the body though, it's squeezing down the peripheral vessels, increasing blood flow to the heart, to the lungs, to the kidneys, and while dilating those little renal arteries. Okay, That's what we want to do. We want to increase the MAP, increase that pressure, increase that mean arterial pressure to cause more perfusion to get to those kidneys. Because more oxygen, more money is always a better thing. You know, I've never heard anyone complain that they had too much money. Um, especially, I've never heard anyone complain that they've had too much oxygen in the body. Unless we're giving them too much oxygen and we're causing them to be toxic in oxygen. It's not good. But I'm just saying we're giving oxygen to your kidneys, okay? So next, let's go into the T and the V which just means that we're increasing the total volume and we're also decreasing the excess volume. So let's go into it here.